This is Tim. I'm Lily. And this is Critiquing Comics. Welcome to Critiquing Comics. This is Tim with Mulele at Mulele's place in Tokyo. Um, and we're surrounded here by comics that we picked up at the recent uh, shows here, Kai Guy and Cat. Um, actually, I all of mine I bought at Kai Guy, but a lot of the same people were at both. Yeah. So th these are items that were sold at uh, both festivals, most of them. Um. And of course, um, in some cases, we were picking up, you know, the latest by artists we've uh, met before and bought their stuff before, and some of it's new also. Uh, um, maybe it'd mm -hmm. be a good idea to mention at the top of this that um, we're not going to get through all of the stuff that we picked up. So no, for um, sure, th this is this is a partial. Yeah, this is part one. Yeah, of probably two or three, <laughs> at least. Um, so a, a year ago, we picked up Citizen Spaceman number one by Jeremy Lambros, and uh, I got number two here. Um, and uh, Jeremy has a very kind of minimalist sensibility. Um, I've been reading his. Uh, the, st the comic that he has in Go Comics, which I can never remember the name of, um, but uh, it's a one-panel thing with, and it's always kind of like it's a little bit funny, uh -huh. and it's kind of amusing, but it's not you know like something you laugh out loud at okay. usually. Um, and this also, I mean, the I don't think this is not really meant to be funny um but it's so the guy traveling in his little spherical ship or he calls it his suit um and i kind of forgot i kind of remember i don't have it in front of me but in part one uh he had encountered some uh small beings that he thought were children and now they've disappeared, and he's trying to figure out what they were and what happened to them. Um, and uh, in this story, he figures out uh, the truth about those beings. Uh, and then he finds that they uh, gave him a gift, a gift of understanding. And before they said goodbye, they gave him one last gift. But then that's where it stops and it's continued from there um, and just like part one um, it's a bilingual book where uh, the Japanese half starts you know where you're reading uh, right to left and the English half is left to right and then they meet in the middle and you have this one spread in the middle that has both languages on it um, so it's nice uh, construction. Um, the interior is black and white. The outside is uh, kind of a blue, blue green color. Um, and his art has a, I don't know, maybe this is done with a computer. It's so sharp. The, the, the it's nice bl thick black lines on the, the figures. I like the look of it. What did you think of, of part two? Um, I, I had some problems with it. Mm. Um, the first one uh, had a, a, a an overall sense of um, uh, adventure and discovery. Mm. Like, we're going to go out into space and, and, and really uh, find something new. Mm -hmm. and we do find something new, but when we find it, we don't know what it is. And um, it kind of leaves us on this cliffhanger where there's an explosion is he alive is he dead kind of thing and in part two we get the answer to that but not the answer to what he found exactly and mm. i understand that in some aspects a lot of finding something new is just to kind of understand it as best you can and move on but um the 
the idea of uh, why he went out into space and, and what he is trying to achieve is not mentioned here. So um, it's been a year, so I've kind of forgotten why he's there in the first place. Yeah, and too. so it, it seems like a um, a kind of moreless um, uh, or untethered uh, second issue. Um, not that I needed a, a full recap, but there needed to be some mention as to what he's trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, because at this point, I can't remember. Yeah. So if if part three comes another year down the line, that's three parts, three years. And they're small enough that I can read them quickly, but they're not epic enough in scale that they carry a lot of weight in my memory. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember from point to point. Mm. Um, either tell the entire story in one big uh, chunk or weave in some things to remind us why we're here. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what he's getting at. That's in my point, one. yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I'm like, okay, it's a little bit tetherless. Um, it, it needs to be, it needs to be um, a little more grounded in its, um, in, in what it's attempting to do. Um, but here it seems to be just a continuation from number one. Mm -hmm. The artwork, of course, is, is exactly the same as before, and it's, it's still lovely artwork. Um, I, I quite like it. Um, but he had a, a ship and a suit and then another suit on top of that, which I, I found a little bit confusing. Um, right. Well, when you see him outside of his quote unquote suit, it looks like he's wearing a space suit. So, yeah. 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 Um, and I don't know, maybe, maybe when he comes out of his space suit, we find out there's a team of little men inside a space suit. And, <laughs> but it, 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 um, it, it's interesting, um, and it's well drawn, but I kind of wish there was more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a little more density to it. Yeah, yeah, and because everything's new, it's a little bit more intense um, with number one. Mm -hmm. um, but with number two, it's like, okay, familiar character, familiar setting, okay, that's right, last time there was this explosion okay now this time picking up from there and nothing happens mm -hmm. so in that sense um maybe one and two uh it's better to read together but separately mm, i'm feeling it's lacking a little bit mm. okay and by the way of course there will be uh links for everything in the show notes um a website or a social media link or something for each uh, creator um Okay, so we actually in the previous critiquing comics we mentioned uh, the Brazilian couple, um, Felipe Kolb Bernardes and Julia, or should it be Julia uh, Nascimento, um, and uh, so we well, Mulele picked up Felipe's. Uh, Raiders from the North, which I take to be a first issue because it doesn't seem to be... I mean, it seems like it's continued, although there's nothing on it that says issue one. Um, and uh, we've also got uh, some issues of their uh, series they're doing together, but let's talk about this Raiders first. Okay. Um, so I was expecting it to be completely, like, historical, you know, about Vikings, uh, but... Uh, it feels a little bit more like there's some supernatural aspect to it or some kind of sword and sorcery thing. Mm -hmm. um, although it's not quite clear to me um, if there is or not. I mean, there's something that they're after that uh, on the last page is being carried away by someone riding a horse uh, in a box that has some light leaking out of it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think there's any talk about exactly what that is. Yeah. Um, actually that, that's, that's a bit of a problem I have with this, with this book. Um, there's, uh, it starts off kind of interestingly, uh, with these guys in a bush, um, or in the bushes getting ready to pounce on this village. Mm -hmm. Um, and 
although the jokes aren't exactly clear to me because I think um, there's maybe a cultural um, misconnect hmm. between he and I, or maybe um, a um, word balloon mis misconnect. Hmm. Um, I felt sometimes the, the direction of the word balloons may not be as I assumed. Um, but from there, I mean, it, it, it kind of sets the mood as a um, not entirely serious uh, comic because they're kind of joking in the bushes even though they're getting ready to do something serious. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we get to this battle in the town, it's, it's pretty gruesome. Uh, yeah, and and over the top, and the only color that is offered in the comic is red, which is the color of the blood. Yeah, um, everything else is black and white. Yeah, and so it it, it kind of um, pushes the intensity of the battle forward. And they have this epic battle, and then we have this. We realize then that they're after some thing that was in the town, which they don't quite uh, get. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't know what that thing is. And I think it would have been better to um, actually set that up a bit. Now, talking to the artist himself, this is issue one. And he realized after printing, uh, I think, that he needs to put those numbers in to kind of keep it uh, yeah, a little more clear. And I was also kind of struck by there's no forward and there's no afterward. There's, there's, it's, it's very, very sparse in its setup. You just get a cover, credits, book, uh, the, the content of the book, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, I kind of felt there was a little bit, um, it's a little bit raw mm. as a first printing. Now, I understand that he printed only 25 of these, and he's, he's going in and correcting some of these things. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, no, he made a very, very small run. Um, and there were uh, some other things as well. For example, he printed in color, not in black and white even though it's a black and white book, uh, black and white with spot colors would actually be better. He used um, um, a different printer than I used, mm -hmm. um, which does on-demand stuff. Um, but using the printer that I use, he would have to opt in for a thousand copies mm -hmm. from the get-go, and mm -hmm. that is hard to swallow. Um, I've got now two closets full of comics, yeah. and probably oh. soon to have a living room full of comics, which my girlfriend will be very happy about. Um, and, you know, it, to sell a thousand copies takes time um, when you're an independent uh, publisher. So I can kind of understand why he did it this way. But it's also a very good way to kind of test what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So this may, in fact, just be a test copy. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I felt it was lacking some information as to what yeah. it is. And the, I know. didn't understand the sequence at the beginning either when they're in the bushes and the guy behind him appears to turn into a zombie briefly or something. Um, I wasn't quite sure what was supposed to be happening there. But then he, that guy reverts back and doesn't seem to know what's going on. So Yeah, I, I, I think there's a gag there that, that may be um, culturally different. Uh, maybe it's it's something. Or maybe is he temporarily possessed by someone? Maybe, and he's saying, "Where is it? You're running out of time." Um, but apparently, talking about that mystery object. Yeah. So, I mean, there there are a couple of things in there that I'm not quite sure about. It needs either a forward or it needs another chunk of of uh, mm. uh, explanation in the comic at the beginning to kind of make it all uh, work. Mm -hmm. um, I think if it had just just a, like a remember in Lord of the Rings the the first one they start talking about the rings straight from the get go I'm talking about the movie not the books but um, they go through the history of okay here's this guy made this ring and then made all these other rings and then passed them out to the other people and then there was one ring to rule them all and blah 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 all of that ex explanation comes at the beginning mm -hmm. and so when we get to the rest of the film we know exactly what that ring is and how bad it is, and how dangerous it is. And so there's a weight of that with each scene. Here, we don't have that. I think we kind of need that explanation at the beginning so we know exactly what they're after, what the stakes are 
for what they're doing, why this battle needs to be that intense. Um, and it makes the jokes um, at the beginning of the comic um, kind of gallows humor, if it is that serious, mm -hmm. which would add just a, a level of intensity that it's kind of missing. Mm. Um, so I think uh, it, it needs that first scene. Mm -hmm. mm. Just looking at the cover here, so the cover is just... I guess the the main character's face with the scar on his lips and everything. Yep. Hmm. Um, yeah, he, that's another thing, though. I mean, he seems to be the protagonist of the book, but I can't tell if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Hmm. I have no which. Uh, I don't know which way uh, the wind is blowing on 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 these people. Um, yeah, and the cover doesn't tell us maybe quite enough about the content. That's what I'm kind of thinking, but yeah, continue. Well, I, I, I think I think it is it is just just that it there. It seems to be more of a sketch than than an actual illustration. Um, it doesn't tell us uh, everything that is in the writer's head, mm -hmm. uh, and some of that is 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 pertinent to the story mm -hmm. at hand. So, yeah, it, it needs a little bit more work, but hmm. okay. Um, now, the one that the Felipe and Julie are doing together, and they explained this when I talked to them on Deconstructing Comics, Kai Guy Part 1, about the name of the comic series. Um, Fe and Yu Ada, I'm not even sure how to, how to pronounce it, F-E ampersand J-U-A-D-A. -A. So... The, it's Felipe and Julia, but it's also punning on the name of, of a Brazilian dish. Yeah, something in beans. Um, but uh, I didn't go back and listen to my talk with them, so I don't remember what it, what it is. But anyway, um, so it's a five-issue series of comics under that title. And basically it's just about them in their daily life uh including working on the comic itself hmm. <laughs> very meta um actually and, it 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 gets gets right up to present day yeah like, issue 4 they're working they're working up to kai guy and cat yeah uh, with the calendar 23 kai guy 25 cat yeah and it's like wait a minute they were selling this book at that yeah <laughs> <laughs> And you see boxes of comics sitting in their in their apartment. Yeah. Although I was surprised that this was not the latest issue. There's another issue after this. Yeah. One. Yeah. So they're then writing uh, fiction, uh, future fiction, science fiction <laughs> about Christmas, um, Christmas in Japan. Um, but yeah, I mean, so a lot of them are just one page. You know, they're. You know, there's a series of comics in each one. You know, yeah. one-page, two-page stories, mostly. Yeah. Um, a lot of them have a gag. Some of them aren't really meant to be funny. Um, they might just kind of end in some cases. Um, and they're, you know, about their own life, about Japan, uh, about working on their comic. Um, and uh, a lot of them are pretty entertaining and fairly uh, perceptive of their surroundings, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I quite enjoyed uh, a lot of it. And the stuff that is funny is actually funny. I, I, I laughed out mm -hmm. loud at a couple of them. Mm, me too. Um, and the ones that, that aren't necessarily meant to be funny um, still do add something to the comic overall. I can't say that I, I understood 100% of some of it, and maybe sometimes I disagreed with the aesthetic of uh, um, uh, using Japanese. I mean, it, it, it becomes a very, uh, very much a uh, foreigners in Japan for foreigners in Japan kind of book mm -hmm. um, with some of those things. Mm -hmm. But... Um, just in general, looking at um, the life of these two people in uh, in Japan, uh, as foreigners in Japan, um, could be, um, how can I say, some of the jokes are not exactly explained, and sometimes I, I felt that, okay, only... 
people living here would get that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so for for international audiences, it may it may be just one or two ga- uh, one or two strips that may be a little bit difficult to follow. But mm-hmm. I think for the most part, it's it's very very well well done. Yeah, yeah. But I would say, and and I did mention this uh, to Felipe, but um, uh, it's too short. Each issue is too short. One issue is too short. Yeah, I mean, I I I like it, and I had only number one. You you got the entire collection. Mm-hmm. So reading number one is like, what? That's it? I want more. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? This is only what, twelve, fourteen pages. Um, yeah, I don't know if they were if they were I mean, all of these. Well, let's see. This first one is dated November twenty sixteen. So yeah. they've done these five in the past year. Right, basically, but yeah, I I wonder why they didn't collect them all into one. Book. I suppose they're thinking, you know, people don't may, may not want to spend very much money, and so we'll make it bite sized, or they can just buy one or two if they want to. But right, right. But um, although uh, he did say that they may possibly put it into a collection, hmm. um, I don't know exactly what their plans are on that, but. Um, Reading through all five of them, there was kind of a sense of completion uh, mm-hmm. that the arc was done. And coming to the end of number five, uh, when they declare that they're done, mm-hmm. uh, I was satisfied. Mm-hmm. And even that strip has a bit of a gag to it, and I liked it. Mm-hmm. It had a nice ending. Um, so for for me, this strip was was quite interesting, and I would like to see more. But... Um, if it if it's presented in such small bite sizes, maybe online would be better, and then just collecting it into one big issue mm. uh, every year, like a yearly thing, would mm-hmm. be much much better. Uh, like Ian does with Square Comics, yeah. or uh, the Life in Japan from Victor Edison. Right, right. Yeah, um, that that style actually would be m- much better from a fan's perspective, mm. uh, which I consider myself to be of this comic. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I guess I got a complete run here. I have to bag and board them or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now another one that I picked up, and this is basically an illustration book, uh, Ink and Dead, from Raúl Trevino. Um, another one I talked to on the podcast at Kai Guy. Um, he's from Mexico, and uh, the drawings in here are all kind of um based on like the mexican day of the dead Mm -hmm. aesthetic which i don't know enough about um like about the sort of um markings on their faces how they do that but it's more it's basically a skull design um and i don't quite understand enough about this i guess um, or I don't know enough about the Day of the Dead, uh, but these are people or dead people or, um, but, you know, all kinds of different styles. Somebody's playing the drums, uh, someone's writing, a, or the skeleton of a bird, um, someone is standing on steps and kissing a giraffe who is also in, uh, Day of the Dead makeup, um, a lot of sticking out of tongues. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, if that's part of the Mexican thing too, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's very nicely drawn. Um, it reminds me of something and I can't quite put my finger on what it is, but, um, hmm. Well, um, Kind of a cartooniness to it that I like. In, in my mind, there's a lot of Miyazaki Hayao that that mm. was influencing this. I mean, there's mm-hmm, the one of the girl riding the cat. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another of um, maybe that's what I'm thinking this, of. This girl doing magic and something kind of exploding upward, which reminded me of Kiki's Delivery Service. Mm-hmm. Um, there just seem to be like these little nods towards anime here and there, mm-hmm. and a lot of Miyazaki, as far as I can. See, not so much in the drawing style, but as kind of feel and, and content. Mm-hmm. Um, which is not to say that he's biting from it as much as he's inspired by that kind of imagery. And he does quite well with it. it it's quite beautiful. 
and there there seems to be kind of a blurring of the line between living and dead or uh, real world with magic um, and I kind of like that too um, it doesn't present a, a, a straight narrative it's not a comic as much as it is kind of a, a theme of um, works that he put together in this book and it's it's all quite lovely mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, I was attracted to the style that was why I picked it up yeah um, yeah so not a comic but uh, interesting set of illustrations yeah although I, I would have loved to have seen a, a color version I mean the the, mm. the cover is so lovely with color that the interiors had they been in color I think would have added a lot to the strength of the of the book um, but the illustrations by themselves in black and white are, are also quite nice yeah okay um, let's talk about this a little bit okay um, Graham McNee uh, minimal comics volume 2 um, so, of course, the minimal comics idea is that the comics are very minimal. They're, they're, each one is three panels, and they basically just show something in the process of happening. Coconut. First panel, the tree, uh, kind of from a distance. Second panel, the coconut is falling from the tree to the ground. It's like halfway between. Last panel, the coconut's on the ground the end. Um, <laughs> color pencils. Uh, a bunch of new color pencils and then next panel some they've been some of them are worn down a bit, you know, sharpened away somewhat, and the third panel they're all even shorter than they were before, and that's it. Well so a lot of the feeling that I get is um, and, and mind you, when we first when we first saw Graham's work, mm -hmm. uh, it it was minimal comics, um, this kind of super short, very minimal ideas. But um, the devil is in the details here. Um, it's not that, um, well, for some of the comics it is very much a this is what it does. So a coconut tree drops coconuts. That's, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> what it does. Yeah. And so that is the extent of it. But um, some of it, like the color pencils, like which one is the shortest, which one is used the most by the artist, and stuff like that, I, I kind of read into it. And so for me, there's kind of a deeper meaning there for some of it. Um, the one about the cat or the one about um, the ant or the fish, um, those are kind of just what they do. Um, mm -hmm. In my mind, they're, they're kind of, that's it. But the one about murder mm. um, that one I like very much mm -hmm. because obviously something horrible happened just by the title and then the last um, it's just this from a distance there's this house and two panels of just the house and the third panel birds are coming I assume crows um, and it's just kind of dark because a murder is heavy and nasty and Obviously, no one found the body. It's still there. Mm. Well, and it's open to interpretation, Very too. Very so. Because I was imagining, like, that there must have been a scream, and so the birds are flying away. Ah, interesting. I imagine that the middle panel was where the murder happened, and then the crows come, mm. because the body is there. It is dead. Hmm. Um, I don't know. But, but regardless, either way, that's exactly the point. There's a lot that's left open to interpretation, but there's enough to give you some um, uh, point of interest to imagine. And I think that that's the real strength of the comic itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think when I, when I first encountered his work, it took me a little while to get into. Well, you were telling me that your your girlfriend had a problem with this, and I think at first I did a little bit too. Like, that's it? Just, okay, a candle burned down? Um, yeah, that's what happens. Um, well, okay, what's but, the point? But See, the way I always took it is, like, yeah, that, that is what a candle does. Mm -hmm. But if we look at it from the perspective of the candle, mm. what else can it do? <laughs> um the life of a candle is short, hard, and fiery. Mm. 
And we are we are watching the end of the Kendall's life. I suppose I I after I got used to it, I guess I kind of thought, well, it's kind of interesting and sort of zen to just kind of focus on one simple everyday process. I think that is the point. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I often read into a lot of people's works and actually talking to uh, Oscar about, um, uh, what's the name of his comic? Sorry, it just slips my mind. Um, about the the, the person in the who, ocean, yeah. Uh, um, Kai, is Kai. That, this, this was just called Kai. Yeah. yeah. So talking to him about Kai and, and the review that I gave it on this podcast, uh, but like a year ago, uh, talking to him later, he listened to it and said, "You know, man, you're reading too much into it. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know that that it was all that deep." Um, but um, so maybe Graham has the same uh, feeling about his comics um, that that's not it. Maybe it is just the Zen meditation on, on the um, passage of time through the burning of a candle. Who knows? Um, without asking him. But my interpretation is that there's a lot more there. But he's reducing it so far down that maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. But if you get it, there's something interesting there. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one... Sure. Uh, where did you get this one? Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, and Nara. Yeah, this is by uh, a John, British yeah, Jonathan artist. Jonathan Edwards. Yeah, a British artist, Jonathan Edwards. Um, I've been following him on Instagram for a while, and um, he his artwork is lovely, and he has come to Japan quite a bit um, to to work uh, to, to work to sketch. Anyway, um, hmm. I don't I don't know. Um, so much about him as a person or as an artist, just that I saw his work and I liked his pictures. Um, and so I saw he was at Kai Guy and um, I picked up uh, one of his books. Uh, it was the last copy that he had. It was uh, Sketchbook Volume 6, Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, and Nara. But um, um, I don't know exactly how he works. Um, although this seems to be more photographs of his sketchbooks than... than uh, what can you say, uh, scanned and, and uh, cropped and, and presented as, like, this is the artwork. Uh, most of it is, you can see, like, um, the wood of the table behind the sketchbook because mm. he just photographed it from above. And at, at first I felt a little bit, wait a minute, that, that's it? It's not going to be a proper presentation? I was like, no, it, it is a sketchbook, and he's showing the sketchbook. And he uses multiple sketchbooks. A couple of the pages are cropped, but um, it's not really necessary. It is meant to be a sketchbook, but it's very nice. It's very beautiful work. Sometimes very detailed, sometimes a little bit simpler, but mm -hmm. still, um, I thought solid, solid work. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see some comic work from him. I don't know if he has comics. Um, and I didn't really talk to him because he was in the middle of doing some sort of uh, illustration presentation with... Copic. Um, mm. I just grabbed a book, said hello, and moved on. Saw him later at Cat. Um, not sure, but I think he might have picked up a copy of one of my books, which pleased me to no end. Um, <laughs> but um, beyond that, I don't know anything about him. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't live in Japan. Uh, as far as I know, he lives in England, but. Because he seemed to be part of some sort of English delegation at CAT. Mm. Um, oh, maybe for the Lakes Festival? Yeah, yeah. He was a part yeah. of, uh, of that. There were, I think, three or four people from that. And he was with them. Okay. Lakes Festival? That's about Leeds, right? Uh, I think that's the part of the UK that it's in. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard of it before, this, this festival there. Yeah, I, I believe his... Um, uh, his his uh, Instagram is John Dofsky. Hmm. I'm, I'm not 100 percent about that. Um, yeah, it's on the back of the book, John Dofsky. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, looking through the the book, so I mean, these are all uh, 
color, mostly color, uh, or partially color, uh, ink drawings of scenes from the cities in the book title. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, like you said, a lot of them are fairly detailed. It gives sort of the feeling of looking at a slightly blurry photograph. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, even though that's not actually what it is, but... Um, but yeah, I like the the look of it. Yeah. Um, and you know, in some some places, I could kind of pick out. Oh, I know what that is. I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. I've been there before. This one's in Ikebukuro Station here in Tokyo. Yeah, um, and he seems to have a fairly good eye eye for detail. I'm not sure of his level of Japanese literacy, but the the characters seem all pretty pretty. Um, uh, correct. Hmm. Um, I mean, whenever whenever a, a foreign artist um, does work about Japan, especially about Tokyo, I'm looking for that level of accuracy. Did they just scribble something that looks like Chinese or Japanese characters, or did they actually go through and and see what it is and, and mm -hmm. actually draw it. Yeah, I've seen examples of the first. Yeah. The first choice there. Yeah, I I um I really find that offensive when mm -hmm. people do that and they do some sort of like uh, chop suey script and it's like what the hell is this? Um I actually saw that in the title of a comic uh it came out for some from some publisher I follow and I actually called them out on it on Twitter, no response. It's like, man, that, that, that title by itself is kind of racist. Nothing. But I don't expect them to change their, their racist title, uh, racist font, uh, just for me. But it's nice to see that he doesn't do that. Yeah, I mean, I've, think I've, I've talked about it before, but back around 2000, 2000 uh, no, it was late 90s. Mm -hmm. um, when, when uh, or after the Heroes Were Born uh, the Heroes Are Born event when uh, Captain America came back to our Earth. Mm. To, um, and they had him, for some reason, sort of popping up in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, a long time ago, I did a, a thing on, on the old website with panels from that showing various inaccuracies about uh, Japan. Yeah. And there is all this kind of gobbledygook Japanese-ish script that's you know a mixture of kanji katakana and and nonsense characters it drove me crazy yes. yeah it, that, that that kind of stuff um i can kind of see where the writer says okay uh the person goes to japan and you're an artist in in some other country thinking i have no idea about japan mm -hmm. well what have i seen in the movies um and there wasn't really google images at the time that comic was made yeah, I mean, well, now it'd be, or even then it would be, okay, well, let me let me uh, rent a copy of, of Black Rain, or uh, uh, let me rent, uh, what was that one with... Um, what, Lost in Translation? No, Blue no, Connery. I was thinking of um, that one with Wesley Snipes and Sean Connery, mm. where Sean Connery's supposed to be like this master of all things Japanese. Oh, um, the Crichton novel. Yeah. Um, that, that like some, something rising sun rising sun it maybe was that was it yeah complete nonsense actually um oscar just read the novel version of that and he said in, even in the novel it was laughably just wrong um both cultural points and 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 linguistic points yeah and... just like nonsense novel um so it could be one of those things um uh, with that particular Captain America bit, the guys maybe in Iowa thinking, Japan, what the fuck? <laughs> um, but maybe he tried his best, but no. Just just <laughs> stay out of that. Um, do you need to wrap up? Um, not not quite yet. I can go okay. a little bit more. Right, we'll we'll yeah. do this okay. one then. So, um, this one is called Starting, uh, a one-day collaborative comic about t uh, taking a new challenge head-on. Uh, this is with uh, Chris Gooch, Mark Jackson, Luke McGarry, John Martz, uh, Mikiko, and Jake Phillips. Um, 
I know the name John Martz. Don't know anybody else, but um, I picked this up at the uh, Lake uh, Table. Okay. Yeah, the Lakes International Comic Art Festival table. Which which of the festivals was, was this? Kaige or Cat? This was Cat. Okay. Because I just I wandered around the room. Because I mean, you know, I've got a table there. No one's buying. I've got no assistant. So I just like shut down the table and walk around for twenty minutes. Um, and um, I found this, and I was like, "Oh, what's this?" She said, "One hundred yen," and I was sold. <laughs> and so, um, good deal. Yeah, because a lot of those comics were a lot more expensive than that. Yeah, yeah. This this was the cheapest comic in the room, but um, the art styles, the printing, it's full color, um, the quality of the comics, all great. Um, I loved each and every one of them. That first one was actually quite powerful. Um, about the dentist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and That would have been the Chris Gooch one. Yeah, um, I, I have no idea as what the connection uh, uh, of these artists is to uh, the Lakes uh, Comic Arts Festival, uh, if they're British artists or if they're uh, international artists who are just mm. thrown in together. Yeah, well, in the back it says Chris Gooch is from Australia, uh, Mark Jackson, UK, Luke McGarry. Um, I'm, I have some familiarity with him. Mm. I saw him at CAD. I didn't have a chance to talk to him. Um, he's British background, but grew up in the U.S. Right. Martz is from Canada. Mikiko, it says Japan slash Germany slash U.K. And Jake Phillips from the U.K. Yeah, so it, not strictly uh, British artists, but um, I, I don't know what their connection is, but uh, it's a nice collection, nonetheless. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed every every comic in there. Mm-hmm. Um, None of, them, none of them overstay. They're all creative uh, and interesting, um, poignant. Yeah, well, it was interesting. Looking at these last two, I really liked uh, Mikiko's art style. Yeah, yeah it and it looks good. like it's going to be funny, and it ends up being poignant. Yeah, the next one looks like it's going to be really dramatic, and it ends up being funny. Uh, <laughs> Well, the last one, Jake Phillips. But 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 the implications of of the universe going on a diet is uh, kind of dark. Uh, the universe is named Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm not, there are different interpretations you could have of that one, I guess. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, they were they were all good. I'm I'm not even sure how one could get a hold of this without uh, attending the Lakes Festival or another show that they're they're at. Yeah. But uh, I'll try to link to something. But I have to say, my my, my favorite ending uh, for any anthology that I've ever read hmm. is that one where uh, on the last panel it says, well, it looks like Luke's not going to finish this one. Yeah, that was uh, Luke let's McGarry. Let's see what the other, the other artists are up to. <laughs> and it's just Nick's comic. Yeah, he turns into a werewolf. You know, he's, he always appears in his own comics. He's turned into a werewolf and he runs away and then we see like his his uh, tablet and stylus just lying there on the ground. Yeah, Reader's voice. I don't think Luke is going to finish this comic. Let's see how the other artists are doing. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's an excellent ending. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so I I hope that this is available somehow for the listeners because, uh, yeah, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you order it from, from England, I'm sure it'll be, you know, um, however much it, it costs, I guess a buck and plus $20 shipping and handling. Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, that's uh, part one, uh, and uh, we're, we're probably going to need another couple of installments to get through everything. Hmm. Um, and we've also got a couple uh, comics in the queue that have come in electronically. So, um, but uh, if you also have a comic that you're working on, you'd like us to critique, you send a PDF or a link to mail at deconstructingcomics.com. We'll read at least thirty pages and talk about it on the show. So, till next time, this is Tim. And Malele. Thanks for listening to Critiquing Comics. <laughs>